Welcome back to another episode of Harmonious at Lunch, the show that fuels your business success. I'm Brandon Gano, your host and guide through the world of harmonious business growth. Today, we're unlocking powerful strategies with industry experts to help your business thrive. If you're a business owner, entrepreneur, or executive, you are in the right place. Join me and our incredible guest today on the journey to clarity, growth, and success. It is time to revolutionize your approach to business. Let's dive in with another episode of Harmonious at Lunch. Hey, we're back with some more bite-sized business advice, Harmonious at Lunch, and I got a guest lined up to talk about a topic that just drives me insane. I'm not even going to sugarcoat it. Jeff Rowe, thank you for being here. We're talking about websites today. So before we dive in, welcome to the show. Thank you for being here. Oh, definitely. I love talking about websites, and I want to get rid of all terrible websites, so we can start here. That's awesome. I, I want to get rid of all websites. So we're we're <laughs> almost aligned there. Um, no, it's so I, I kid because there's there's all these experts out there and everybody has their take. I, I like that you don't over specify though, and you just say you want to get rid of terrible websites. So I, I think I think I want to start there really. How do you define what a terrible website means? Well, think about how we interact with websites. I mean, we're on websites all day, every day, and a bad website is wasting my time and energy. So it's one where I have to spend a lot of time finding the option that I need. Maybe the menu is too cluttered, or the option is poorly labeled, or there's pop-ups getting in the way when I'm trying to click the button, and then it accidentally makes me click an ad. Those all add stress to my life and waste my time. That's a terrible website. It's not serving me. It's not good for the business either because now I think less of them because they didn't spend the time to make a good interaction through their website. So that that's kind of what I'm talking about. And yes, obviously there are ones that you look at it and you're like, "Whoa, where did that come from?" you know, in the stone age. But even beyond that, it's it's you know, the things that annoy us, those are the terrible websites. Okay, I'll I'll be honest with you. I thought you were going to go more the Stone Age route because we've all been on those websites. It's okay, they exist. But I that's interesting that you say uh it's more about the the customer journey. I mean, duh. First of all, like why didn't I think of that? But I'm curious where so where do you start when you're working with people to build a website or help them build their own website whatever it is? Do you start with the the customer journey or do you even go steps before that? Yeah, that's a good question. We do actually start with identifying that target customer for the business. We mm -hmm. need to understand who we're talking to, who is going to be visiting this website, and what do they care about. The very first thing we do when we're doing a full website project is get that information, and then we do the copywriting for the home page to make sure we have the messaging dialed in for that customer. That's even before we come up with the design for the site because the design needs to support the messaging and not the other way around. And that's something I see a lot of people do wrong. The first thing they do is they go pick out a design template for WordPress or whatever, and then they shove words into it based on how much space the template gave them. But it's not necessarily you know, a helpful message that's going to resonate with that target audience. So that's why we start that way. No, that makes sense. Are you, are you anti-template? Is that, is that what I'm hearing? Well, let's, let's spark some controversy here in, in the <laughs> comments. <laughs> I'm, I'm not 100% anti-template okay. because you got to start somewhere. If you don't have a budget yet to do a custom design, sure, find a template. Uh, there are definitely good templates and bad templates. And the main problem with templates is you start seeing it pop up throughout the internet. You start noticing, oh, wait, I think I've seen that before, or it just feels more generic. And it, it has to be because it's a template, right? It can't ever be fully customized to your business because they're making it to cater to lots of people. So if you do want to take that next step to make the website a little bit better and more specific to your business, of course it has to be customized. So templates might be good for starting out, but you don't want to stay there. And um, the reason I mentioned it in the order of doing the website is because if you start with a template, you're kind of pigeonholing yourself. You know, if you've got a double headline, you know, two really important lines that you need to get across right off the bat, but the template gave you one, okay, do you cut it back and just leave one line? Or do you put in the two lines and now it throws off the rest of the template, right? And so most people make the choice of, ah, I guess I'll just put the one line in. Now it's not as impactful because your message isn't as strong. And so you're kind of shooting yourself in the foot in that sense. So. Templates can be helpful, but don't just rely on them to you know solve all your problems. Yeah, that that makes sense, and that that's good advice too. So then, when you go back to, you said when you're working with people, you start with filling in the the copy before the design. So mm -hmm. I'm curious, 
a different kind of template? Like, do you have a structure uh, or, or a template that you use with your clients so that they can get all their ideas out and then kind of narrow that down? Like, because what I'm coming at here is I see a lot of websites where, you know, it's just like vomit of information and, and it's like the whole company history and all their products and you just scrolling and scrolling. So how do you, how do you start by identifying like what's the most important copy and, and things to include on the, the website? Yeah. And, and that's a good question. Uh, what we do is we have a, a form with several, a couple dozen questions, right. That helps us understand that target customer. But then in terms of what's actually right on the page, think about, uh, when you go to a website, you're going to decide pretty quickly if you're going to stay or move on. So right away, you know, that first heading that you see that needs to be really compelling to you as a visitor and needs to make you want to read the next line. And that second line needs to make you want to read the paragraph after it. So the job of the first few items on the page is to get you to stay and keep reading. And so once you kind of get people reading down the page, okay, then you can start getting into the other details about the services that you offer or the pricing or whatever. You don't want to start with that and just list like, we do residential roofs in you know Orange County. Like, great. So do you and everybody else on Google. But if you have something specific that is going to make you different, you want to start with that. Um, and it, it, it needs to be something that sets you apart from somebody else. So again, with the roofer, if you're like, uh, we fix your roof in 24 hours or it's free, like, okay, now I'm listening. I'm going to keep mm -hmm. reading. What type, does this apply to me? Is this the right type of roof? Am I in the right zip code that you offer this? Are there any other restrictions? Like I'm going to keep reading. So grab the attention first. And then as you move down, you can provide additional information once people care and they've decided to stick around. Does that help answer the question? Yeah. And I'm curious how you structure that too, because um, again, just putting too much information will deter people from even reading it and not having enough will cause them to, I would assume, be frustrated by like, maybe you're hiding something behind a, a paywall or, or whatever the scenario is, maybe a roofer is not. But um, I guess people in that scenario would think you're tricking them to get on a phone call. So how do you, when you're structuring this customer journey, I guess, mm -hmm. how do you know, like, how do you get inside the customer's head and say, this is exactly what I need to see on this website in order to do business with this company, because I can feel that they understand me. Yeah. That's part of the, the point of our questions in that form, right? Mm -hmm. We want to understand who the customers are, what type of people, what income stratus, you know, they're on and what are their frustrations? You know, if you've been doing this business as a roofer for a while, I can ask you questions about, Hey, what do people complain about the most? Or have you ever had to give refunds because somebody didn't like something or uh, uh, these are the type of things. If you go uh, for a product, for example, you can go to Amazon, look at the one star reviews, see what people complain about. And that kind of tells you what people are looking for, their objections or what frustrates them. Same thing with a service business. You know, if they have reviews on Google that aren't good, you look at that and say, oh, okay, they wanted me to finish faster or they wanted me to be cheaper or whatever it is. But if you're the roofer, you kind of know this from experience and you can tell us like, hey, these are the things that people complain about. Here's what I do to kind of help mitigate that or to make a better experience for the customer. And then I'm going to focus on those things and highlight them in that copy, right? Uh, especially for someone who's been shopping around for roofs, you know, they're going to have the whole gamut of options and they're going to be frustrated because everybody else is doing the same thing. And then our copy is going to highlight that one thing that they're frustrated about and say, Hey, look, we do this differently. Oh, hmm. okay. Let me, let me keep reading. Right. And, and then after that, it's okay to have all the information as long as it's well organized. It's not like you're trying to trick someone. Like, of course, there's going to be a services page. I got to go into detail into how it works. And part of that is giving information, educating the customer, letting them know what to expect. We feel safer when we know what's coming. Right. So rather than just, Hey, we do great roofs, book a call. Okay. Give me a little more than that. And so you say, okay, when you schedule your call with us, you know, you'll talk to Tanya who will get you scheduled within one week. Then you'll meet with us for 20 minutes and we will talk about the type of roof, the you know price range, then the schedule. After that, we'll send you this proposal. You pay, like break it down so they know exactly what's coming. And now there are fewer objections because they feel like they know. Like, we just, as humans, we like that, right? We know what's coming. We want to have the GPS on instead of just driving and hope we find the place. So this is part of what goes into that messaging and doing it strategically is it's helping the customer feel good, but you're also allowing that customer interaction to go much more smoothly, right? Because 
Now you've already set the expectation, you've laid the groundwork. And um, to touch on one more thing, which you talked about, you don't want like a whole wall of text on there. That's fine. Spend time. You can make it concise. And then we use white space to break it up to make it feel easier to read, Mm -hmm. shorter paragraphs, uh, shorter sentences and things like that just kind of trick our brain into thinking it's not as hard and if you have a good design around how you break it up it can still feel natural to read through all that content without getting overwhelmed so i know that was a ton of stuff so i'll I'll pause there no that that's awesome and that's that's such great information too i'm thinking to uh the roof for example the service-based businesses typically these are local businesses um you know roofers trades even lawyers accountants these are local businesses. There's going to be probably a lot of competition in that area. And a lot of these people have, have the stone age websites like we talked about. So when you're, when you're going through this process with your clients, you're asking all the right questions. Is there a balance of being totally different in, in both your copy and your design? And and how do you also balance that? Because um, you know, when, when a customer lands on that website, if they, if they are checking out the competition, they go through four stone age websites and then one, like, wow, this is, this is next level. Some aliens put this website together. Like, I mean, does that even, does that deter people that I feel like that's a stupid question, but I'm, I'm always saying like this, this is too different. I feel unsafe. That's a good point. And that can happen. Uh, the thing there is if all you're doing is putting flashy graphics and stuff, but not having compelling messaging, then that's probably what's going to happen. People are going to think, oh, wow, this is probably too expensive. Um, I'm going to go over here with this guy. Mm-hmm. But if you have the right balance of this looks really professional and clean and everything they're saying here makes a lot of sense, I feel like they really know what they're doing. Now I've associated them with a positive, uh, you know, I have th- that first impression of them tells me I'd be good working with them, right? That I feel more comfortable because they've spoken to me. So that's why the messaging has to be on point. Even if your design is fantastic and the messaging's bad, it's ultimately the messaging that convinces someone to contact you. Okay. That, I mean, that makes complete sense. Um, in, in terms of messaging, what are, what are some of the questions? Can you, can you reveal some of the questions you ask on, on your intake form? Or is that, is that your secret sauce? I will respect that answer, but I'm just curious because I don't think people, I mean, listen, let's, let's just tell you why I'm asking this question. If you're watching this, look behind me. Our logo is an upside down question mark. Everything we do is about asking questions because that's, that's the answers are within you. They need to, we need to help you get them out. And that's what I hear you're doing with your clients. Um, So I'm just curious if you can, if you can give us some insight into some of them, maybe people can start to review their website and decide if they need help or not. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing really secret to these questions. I'm sure a lot of companies and marketers have different versions of these questions. Uh, but we start with the basic stuff and demographics like, okay, are you serving men or women? Are they teenagers or adults? Do they have kids? Have they gone to college? How much money do they make? Um, have they d- hired someone for this service before? So the further down you go, the more specific you can start to get. And like, mm-hmm. Okay, if they could man- you know, wave a magic wand, how would this experience look like uh, you know for them what would look look like and what steps would be included or what uh would they want to pay uh what's the timeline that people would like to see um and depending on the what the product or service is like there's other questions you could ask like okay what are they interested in what tv shows do they watch for a roof i don't care what tv shows they watch (laughs) most of the time right so there's going to be different types of questions depending on what the business is but a lot of them are the same and the goal of the questions is to understand who the person is and the psychology behind their buying decision when they're coming to your website so that's the the gist of it right any question you can think of that would help draw that out uh, is going to be a good question in that sense. Yeah, that's, that's a great point. So if I'm, if I'm listening to this and I'm thinking, I wonder, I wonder which side of this conversation I'm on, what are, what are some ways I can objectively look at my own website and say, maybe I need help or no, I think, I think I'm pretty close here with the messaging. Um, is it, is it all analytics or are there some other things that we need to look at? Uh, you mean just to evaluate if your copy is going to resonate with your customers? 
you can ask your customers. That's something a lot of business owners should do more That's often. That's a novel concept. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Put out a survey. If you keep track of your emails of past customers, just reach out to some of them and say, hey, you know, we're looking at redoing our website. Um, right now, this is what it says. And you can maybe even give them the other option. Like, this is what we're thinking of saying. Can you give me your thoughts and opinions on this? For you as a buyer, what, what do you feel better about? What makes you feel like you could trust us? And you'll be amazed at the things they say. And a lot of the times you take their feedback and even use it, some of it word for word in your new copy, right? Because they told you what they care about. And you're like, oh, okay. And that gives you the glimpse through their eyes that you need to kind of see if you're saying the right things. Mm -hmm. Wow. Shocking. It, ask your, talk to your customers. That's crazy. Jeff Rowe, you're, you came on here and you went crazy on us. Uh, <laughs> um, you can read your, if you don't have customers yet, you can read reviews of similar companies in your industry, right? The, that way you get a feel for what people say about those yeah. types of companies, whether good or bad. And that again, can give you some insight. Uh, actually, I, so I didn't think of that, but that's, um, that's actually what I did when I started my last company. Well, that's why I started the company was there was so much frustration in the industry about the quality of service. And I spoke mm -hmm. on the website directly to that, that common pain. And I just like, I started getting customers for no reason. Like I couldn't understand why. And then finally I put the pieces together. I was like, oh, maybe that's what, that's what people wanted to solve. So um, that's, that's a really good tip that I'll just say, even if you, you are a business, you have a website, go look at what your competitors are, are or what their one-star reviews are about and start speaking to your customers about solving those problems, because that's probably in your industry, what needs to be solved. So that's, that's a, uh, a little gold nugget of a tip from, from Jeffro there. Um, okay. So then I want to, I'm curious when you're working with your clients, like, can you give us kind of a, a transformation story of maybe it doesn't have to be a stone age website to one that you've built, but I'm curious, like what, when we go from a bad website to a good website, what are some things that your clients start to experience in terms of new clients, new leads, uh, revenue, whatever it may be? Yeah, and for that, I will uh, refer back to a testimonial I got. I did a, a commercial tree and landscape company. We cleaned up their website, made it look more professional, got a lot more there before and after pictures to show people what they can do. And when uh, I got the review back afterwards, he said, you know, initially I didn't think much would happen after redoing the website, but we've been getting more quote requests through the website than ever before, and it's made a big difference. And that's just because... the you know, your website is your digital business card. It's your first impression for a lot of people. And you need to get their attention. You need to let them know you're not a fly-by-night organization. You're not going to disappear tomorrow with their money. They need to feel understood. They need to feel like they can trust you to do a good job. And so if you if you do a good job with the website, all that is conveyed. And then I feel more comfortable contacting you and doing business with you. Yeah, that's I, that's an interesting way to put it too, because most of the time people will they'll come across a website and decide if they want to work with you or not. And, and you don't have the opportunity to answer questions real. Well, you do. I mean, on the website, I'm not going to say that you don't, but you have to, you have to answer those questions right. before they're willing to talk to a human being. Is that getting harder and harder in today's environment? Cause everything is so digital. So, so AI driven, like, how are you, how are you getting around that fact that they're, it's a human dealing with a robot for the large majority of the conversation before they have a chance to deal with you as the business owner. Well, the, the answer is kind of like what we've been saying, uh, make sure the messaging reflects you mm -hmm. as the business owner and as a person and what you're bringing to the table and make sure that the design doesn't turn people away. So if they come and they see stock photos and some very generic headlines or claims, like we get, we're a family owned business and we guarantee our work. You know, we stand for quality. Like, okay, great. I've heard that 14,000 yeah. times. So say something different that's going to tell me, hey, we'll have your roof fixed in 24 hours or it's free. Or whatever your claim is, you've got my attention now. And instead of the stock photos, spend a little time, take a picture of your team or you as the founder or, you know, your your office, whatever, make it customized and real so that it's not just, I don't feel like I'm just looking at another robot or AI made website, that this is actually, this has a human touch to it, right? And I see you speaking to me through the website instead of just something that was generated by ChatGPT. Mm. 
Yeah, that's uh, there's too many of those, unfortunately. Um, well, so this it this is it's a good conversation to have because there are too many Stone Age websites. There's too many bad websites, and obviously you wanna you wanna eliminate all of them. I I hope you succeed on that on that so mission. <laughs> I don't I don't know if time. you will, but um, so okay. okay, if someone wants to take the next step. They want to work with you and see what you can do, how you could transform their website or help their SEO. I mean, you have a number of products. Um, mm -hmm. I see your website on the screen, frobro.com, but what, what should someone do to take that next step? Yeah, if you're not sure where you stand uh, and you don't feel comfortable trying to evaluate it, go to frobro.com slash dominate and fill out the info there. I'll do a free evaluation of your website and your online presence for you and kind of give you my thoughts on what you need to change and improve. And then if you do want to work with me, I can always give you a quote for that. I have two options for that. You know, if you're already an established business and you want to do the best possible business website that we've been talking about, you know, those may start around six thousand dollars or up depending on if we're doing custom functionality and integrating with other uh you know back-end stuff that you have in your systems okay sure we can do that and talk about what it's going to cost that's going to be a range if you're just starting out and you just want to get away from the cheap templates and you need something that looks good uh, but is going to perform okay as well i've got a starter website option for 500 bucks just to get you moving in the right direction um and that way it won't be as extensive as all the things we've talked about but now i can give you that you can listen to this episode again and start going through some of these questions on your own and update it to make it good uh so that that way you're moving in the right direction website's never done so you have to start somewhere keep iterating on it and improving it over time that's awesome that's that's a cool offer so i'll put that link um frobro.com you said dominate Frobro.com slash dominate. Yeah. And okay, that comes yeah. from, I, I host a podcast called Digital Dominance. Uh, so you can also listen to that. We talk about digital marketing and, and websites and all of that, but that's where the dominate comes from. That's awesome. No, you're going to dominate their, their website. I love it. <laughs> um, so we'll put that in the show notes, but um, another question that just came up and, and then we'll tie this episode up here. When I, when I first had my website professionally done, this is many, many years ago, I was so frustrated because I didn't ask the question, shame on me. I had it professionally done and then I wanted to go make an edit, just like a quick headline. And it ended up costing me like 250 bucks because the company was like, oh no, we kind of like own everything. So when you build websites, like are, are we chained to working with you or are they also user-friendly? They are user-friendly. So I do WordPress websites and that way you can have a login to go in and change stuff yourself. We use a page builder called Elementor that's very user-friendly. I'm happy to walk you through how to do it and make those edits. It's pretty straightforward, but I always recommend that you as a business owner maintain ownership of your accounts and websites and things because you never want to get stuck in that position where somebody, you know, if I get hit by a bus, you still want to have your website and keep doing your business. Uh, so I always make sure you guys have access to it and I recommend whoever you work with, make sure you have ownership. Yeah, these are the questions you only learn to ask after making the mistakes, <laughs> unfortunately. But hey, yes. that's why this podcast exists. That's why people like Jeff Rowe are here sharing their knowledge. And um, I, I really appreciate you coming on and, and helping us understand what a good website looks like, what maybe a bad website could look like, and obviously how to bridge that gap and get our business looking right to the potential customer. So thank you again for being here. I appreciate it. And you, the listener, make sure you're subscribed if you're not already and go check out the uh, the website in the comments and go take that, um, go go take Jeffro up on his offer really is see how your website's performing, get that analysis and just see what could happen. You never know. You could be turning away 90% of your visitors and a little tweak could really impact your business and your bottom line. So go check it out. We'll see you on the next episode of Harmonious at Lunch. Thanks for watching.